Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, and today I wanted to share with you a hand from the 2014 World Series of Poker main event final table that I found to be particularly interesting. Uh, this uh, play I'm going to show you is an extraordinarily high level play, but if you look hard, you can probably find some spots to add this play to your game and it will increase your win rate in the long run. So um, the three players left at the final table are all very good players. They were all world class and excellent. So in this hand, we're playing 600,000, 1.2 million. And we see that Stevenson has about, eh, we'll call it 18 big blinds. So Van Hoof raises to 2.6 million from the button with Jack-5 offsuit. And this play is acceptable. I, I think you need to be raising a lot of buttons whenever you are playing three-handed. And that's simply because the small you really don't want to be playing from the small blind. And from the big blind, you're often going to be out of position. So you really need, well, you are going to be out of position most of the time. So you really want to make a point to abuse the button as much as possible, especially if the players in the blinds are not three betting you too often or playing too aggressively. I'm not a big fan of raising into the shortest stack. Notice that Van Hoof and Jacobson both have about the same amount of chips. So I'm not a big fan of raising into the shorter stack, but you know, what are you going to do? You have to raise sometimes and might as well be a Jack five offsuit. <laughs> So Stevenson decides to call. I think he could go all in if he feels like it. If he thinks Van Hoof is opening a ton of buttons, I would be perfectly fine with Stevenson shoving preflop just to try to maximize fold equity. So Steven Stevenson gets top pair, which is great for him. And it goes check, check. I imagine Stevenson would check call a bet on the flop, like say Van Hoof bets 250K or 2.5 million. Stevenson would probably call. Uh, check shoving's an okay idea. It'd mainly be for protection or if you think your opponent will call you with ace high or a few slightly better hands. But um, check calling's probably going to be fine, but check shoving's also acceptable or check raising small. Any any play that Stevenson wants to make is going to be fine as long as he just doesn't fold the flop. Um, interestingly, though, Van Hoof decides to check. If I'm he, him in this scenario, I think this board is dry enough to where I'm probably going to fire out a bet on the flop and a bet on the turn to try to get my opponent off of a lot of hands that are maybe bottom pair and worse. I think you're going to get floated a lot on this flop, which is not really what you want, but knowing that you can at least check raise the turn or um, consider continue betting the turn and you're probably not going to get check raise too often. So check, check on the flop. Stevenson now decides to bet the turn for 4 million, which is a pretty sizable bet. Uh, I think it's a good bet. It's going to protect versus various um, various overcards because if Stevenson knows that Van Hoof has, say, Jack-10, he doesn't really want him in the pot. So you want to bet and make hands like Jack-10 fold. While at the same time, Stevenson also is going to get called by any ace high and also any marginal pair. So this is a fantastic spot where Stevenson can bet for value, but also get a large amount of protection by making Van Hoof fold hands that have plenty of equity against him. So it's a, it's a fantastic spot to bet. You really don't want to be checking in this scenario. And when Van Hoof turns a pair, I don't really see what he can do besides call. Um, shoving seems kind of crazy. Folding seems a little bit nitty, so eh, got to call. Then on the river, this is where this hand gets really interesting. The river is the king of clubs, which brings in all of the flush draws, and also would complete a random uh, you know, king-queen or king-seven or something like that. Now Stevenson decides to go all in for more than the size of the pot. And you have to ask yourself, is Stevenson bluffing or is he value betting? So if he's bluffing, that means he thinks that Van Hoof is going to fold a better nine or something like pocket tens. First off, does Van Hoof have a nine or pocket tens? The answer is almost certainly not because he would have bet that on the flop. Um, also, does Van Hoof have a draw? Again, the answer is probably not, because if he had a draw on the flop, uh, a flush draw, I mean, he probably would have uh, bet the flop as well, because he can easily call a check shove with a, a reasonable flush draw. So that means that Van Hoof probably does not have Stevenson beat. So in order for Stevenson to shove here, he has to think that Van Hoof is going to call with something like pocket sixes, um, ace five, maybe jack five, um, ace four, ace three, Queen three, stuff like that. So the question then becomes, will Van Hoof ever make that call? And most players are going to think, no way Van Hoof can make that call. He only has middle pair and a super scary card peeled off. However, as we see, Van Hoof does make the call. So this is called a merge bet. 
And a merge bet is a bet placed with a hand that is normally not good enough to bet, but you make that bet expecting your opponent to call with slightly worse hands than yours, which should be most of his range. And that's a really key part. You have to know your opponent's going to think that you are capable of bluffing. And also, you have to know that your opponent knows that he has a, a pretty junky hand. So, take a look at this little diagram. The blue hands are the hands that your opponent thinks that we are going to bet. He thinks we're going to go all in with nothing and with the nuts, which most people would do whenever the obvious flush card comes in. I'm going to be bluffing or I'm going to have the nuts. So, our opponent's going to call with his bluff catchers, which is most of his range. Remember, we think he would bet a nine or better on the flops. That means he probably has a lot of bluff catchers. Obviously, he could have a king, but remember, we sort of bet for protection against that king on the turn, so we didn't expect a lot of random king highs to call the turn. So a king's not that likely either. So knowing that, here's what we actually want to bet with. We want to actually bet with mediocre hands, and we also want to bet with the nuts because our opponent's going to call with a lot of these bluff catchers. So normally, players are only making this bet with the nuts or nothing, but knowing what our opponent has and knowing that our opponent's going to call, Stevenson made a fantastic bet on this river and got exactly the result he was looking for. Whenever you are making these merge bets, remember that you want to know that your opponent thinks you either have the nuts or nothing. That's a very important thing. And you also want to know that your opponent recognizes that you are capable of bluffing. Um, uh, one, the hands you usually want to make this bet with are the hands that you don't exactly want to check call with. Or if you're unsure what to do if your opponent will... Or if you're unsure what your opponent's going to do if you check. Like, if you check and your opponent bets, if you don't really know what you want to do, but you have a hand that beats a lot of the marginal made hands, that's a really good spot to go for a merge bet. And these scenarios don't come up very often, but when they do, you can make a killing. And this is a play that's been um, really getting discovered and uh, looked into by a lot of the high stakes players. And it's only a matter of time before the middle stakes and small stakes players start making these plays. And quite often you'll see a guy's making bets in situations where their opponent really should only be calling with hands that beat them. But this is not that scenario. And I think it's really important to be able to differentiate between spots where a guy's just betting because he doesn't what doesn't know what to do and a guy's betting because he's targeting a specific part of his opponent's range. And remember, in this scenario, we were fairly confident that Van Hoof had exactly a bluff catcher. And knowing that, since we beat bluff catchers, even though our hand's kind of crappy, we can still go for value. So a great bet by Stevenson. And really, I don't, I don't fault Van Hoof for the call. I mean, it, it looked like it should be fairly bluff heavy. So I think it's actually a pretty well-played hand by both players. Uh, but <laughs> the guy with the best hand won, and quite often that is what happens in poker. I hope you enjoyed this short lesson from the 2014 WSOP Final Table. If you're interested in more high-level lessons like this, then I hope you'll join me for a live webinar this Saturday called Lessons from the 2014 WSOP Final Table. On this live webinar, I'm going to analyze 19 of the biggest hands from this year's Final Table. This webinar is going to be on Saturday, November 22nd at 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. When I open this up to the general public later, I'm going to charge $97 for this webinar, but if you order it right now, you can attend my webinar live, ask me your questions live, and get the recordings for just one payment of $49. Click on the button below to sign up, and I'll send you the information you need to join this live webinar. Then, I'll email you a link to access the video and MP3 recordings of the webinar as soon as I get them posted online, which should be two or three days after the event. Attend the webinar or watch the recordings, and do your best to apply what you learn over the next 60 days. If you aren't happy for any reason at all, just let me know by sending an email to support at floattheturn.zendesk.com and I'll give your money back with no questions asked. So, if you want to take your tournament game to the next level and get all of your questions answered by me, click on the button below to sign up. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to teaching you at my Lessons from the 2014 WSOP Final Table.